Join me right now is the former PXC lightweight champion, JJ Ambrose. What's going on, JJ? Yeah, uh, all good. Um, still the PXC champion. They didn't take my belt. It's still hanging on my wall. So, still lightweight all right. champion. All right, what's going <laughs> on with that? What's going on with PXC? We haven't heard from them in a long time. I think they just took a little bit of hiatus to uh, revamp their organization. But uh, they're they're talking about doing another show this year. So I'm looking forward to watching that. Especially, um, it's the only local show for the Islanders. So so uh, it gives like the local talent um, a chance to showcase their skills to get off island. Um, and, and really, because it's expensive to go off island. Uh, flying in to Guam or off of Guam is super expensive. So th this is their only shot at getting off, basically. All right, let's get into your fight career. The last fight, the last time we saw you in the cage was your return to Bellator at the beginning of 2018. You dropped a decision. Yeah. What are yeah. your thoughts on how that fight went down? Man, I, I feel like I overestimated him, and I kind of held back. I, I mean, call it getting uh, stage fright or not, but I thought that he was going to hit a lot harder than he did, and then... When I was in there, I got really comfortable wanting to strike when, you know, my bread and butter is wrestling and jujitsu. Um, and then when I did get it to the ground, you know, I went for a couple of signature moves that he was very well prepared for. Whoever scouted for him, his coaches, you know, they, they really had me pegged, you know. And then for the first time in my career, I got kicked in the calf. And I have newfound respect for that because when he kicked me, like the second time, my legs started getting numb. And I was like, wow, that, that's impressive. And I had no answer for it. Nobody had ever kicked me there before. Yeah, that is a new technique that's coming along nowadays and everybody's using it. So you got to get used to it, I guess, Everybody now. I, I just, I was behind the curve and uh, was not expecting that. Every video I had watched of him, he threw a leg kick and then. Um, you know, I had planned on the whole camp, I'm going to catch a leg kick and I'm going to throw a right hand. And sure enough, he threw the calf kick and I kept reaching for it and it was never there. It was never landing where I needed it to. And, uh, you know, it took me out of my game big time. All right. Now, what is your status currently with Bellator? Are you still contracted to them or are you a free agent? Uh, no, um, I asked to be released. Um, I, I really wanted to get busy this year. I didn't want to be held back by any contracts. Um, man, I'm, I'm always best when I'm fighting frequently. Uh, no layoffs. So, I mean, I already have my first three fights scheduled for this year. And, uh, man, I just want to get busy. I'm, I mean, I'm fighting March. Oh, no, I'm fighting February 22nd, then the end of March, and then again in May. So I just want to go bang, bang, bang right away, um, and then uh, we'll go from there. I want to stay busy. I like fighting, man. It's never been about the money or the fame. I just, man, I love getting in the cage. It's always awesome. All right, let's talk about that February 22nd main event slot that you have scheduled. Wawan MMA 18. You're taking on Allah yep. Mansour in Kuwait. A lot of people didn't even yep. probably think that there's anything going on in Kuwait with mixed martial arts, but you have been out there a few times. Uh, you yeah. fought for Gladiator uh, FC. You were their champion. Um, is Wawan MMA the same organization? Yes. Um, so, well, Juan, um, he actually owns a chain of like uh, nutrition shops like GNC. Um, but Wawan is, man, he's massive business. So... He also has a passion for jiu-jitsu and uh, MMA. He's a practitioner himself, and uh, he started that Gladiator Fighting Championships a while ago. And then, um, obviously, to brand himself more, he put he slapped the Wawan sticker on it, and now it's Wawan Fighting Championships. Yeah. yeah, you've been out there 2013, 2014, 2016, and now you're returning back. A lot of people have... Yeah preconceived notions about the Middle East during your visits to Kuwait. How was your experience? Oh, man. I, I've met some of the greatest people ever over there. You know, like I, I've met like lifelong friends that, you know, I cherish. Um, their culture is different and unique from anywhere else I've been in the world. And uh, no, I, I love going there. It's one of my favorite places to visit now. Yeah, I saw a video yep. of you, I think, playing with tigers out there. I'm pretty sure you can't do that anywhere else in the world. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Unless you're Mike Tyson, right? But uh, yeah, I mean, they're different. But you know, I I think about like owning a tiger as a pet, and then like you know maybe like people would stick their noses up like uh, that's not very humane. They belong in the wild. I'm like, man, people are hunting them in the wild. It, it's it's probably good to be enclosed a little bit, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was so cool, very surreal being that close to something you've only ever seen on TV or behind a massive fence at a zoo, but being able to actually touch a tiger, you know, that, that was a life, lifetime experience. Your upcoming opponent, Mansour, you know, he's a up and coming guy, he's a prospect. What do you know about your opponent? Oh, I know he's got heavy hands. He's got a bunch of knockouts on his record. Um, he, he's still pretty green. He, uh, I think he has seven or eight fights. So um, the only disadvantage that I have going into this, um, of course, is that it's at welterweight. And right now I'm walking around at about 175. So um, there's definitely a size advantage. But um, I got, it makes it fun, you know, uh, not having to cut 20 pounds to make weight. That, that sounds amazing. So I'm still enjoying food. I'm actually enjoying the fight camp. I'm not missing out on anything. When people ask me to go to dinner, I don't have to be like, no, I got to do meal plan. So, you know, it's been nice. I just had a steak for lunch. So feeling, feeling good. What kind of fight are you expecting out of this guy? Because there's pretty much, have you watched a lot of film on him? Because I don't think there is much about him. I, I mean, there's a little bit of here and there. I mean, he had a really fast uh, TKO over somebody. I think he hit him one time and that was it. And then uh, he fought a really good grappler and got taken down and uh, TKO'd. Um, no, there's not a whole lot of video footage on him. And uh, sometimes that's good because, you know, like when I when I fought uh, Saad, I was expecting a very specific thing to happen and then it never came. So, you know, like I, I spent a whole camp looking for one thing and it never came. And so with this guy, like I'm going in there a little bit more uh, open minded um, to what could happen. You know, I've been working all aspects of martial arts, of course, with uh, the kickboxing, wrestling, and jiu-jitsu. Um, so, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean I, I'm having a lot of fun this camp. It, it's nice to get, uh, get hit the ground running this year. I've noticed that your team has been growing as of late. Have you added a lot of different components to the gym? Huh. Man, so, like, my wife hates this, but um, I make such a small salary for the amount of work I put in at the gym. I'm not trying to brag. It's just, it's been my passion uh, my whole life. You know, like, I, I've spent all these years in the gym, and uh, I'm used to just getting that fight paycheck. I'm not used to collecting, like, a big earning from a gym. So, Every dime that I make, I just am like, okay, well, let's go buy this piece of equipment. Let's buy that. Let's fly, let's fly in this coach. I'm actually flying in a uh, Machado black belt next month. You know, the, I'm already at, in the hole like seven grand. I'm not. I don't collect uh, seminar fees from students. You know, um, coming up uh, as a fighter, I, I never had to pay gym fees or. Uh, I never had to pay for seminars. I was very lucky to be around the people that I was that believed in me. So, like, this is kind of like my way of giving back. Um, it, it also means that I can't buy my wife anything pretty. But, you know, the amount of people that we could touch with this uh, specific Brazilian jiu-jitsu practitioner, you know, that'll be good. It's good for the island. It's good for my gym. It's just good for the community all around. This fight is advertised as Thor versus Superman in the comic book world. Does anybody beat Superman? Uh, I don't know. He's kind of so ridiculously <laughs> overpowered where I feel like sometimes I'm more like Batman, you know, <laughs> uh, as far as superpowers go. I don't have super knockout power, and I'm not amazingly strong, fast, or gifted in any way. But, uh, you know, I, I, I tough it out. I get the job done. I'm kind of gritty. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is, it, it's kind of cool that they're, they're pegging it like that. Um, I guess they don't really know my backstory with the whole Superman thing where it wasn't really a compliment. It was more of like a, uh, you're, you're strong, but you're not very technical, dude. <laughs> 
So you mentioned earlier that you got a bunch of fights lined up this year. Could you give us some insight into those events, or is it something that you have to keep under wraps? No, totally. No, no, no. Um, no secrets here. Um, so I have February 22nd in Kuwait, and then I, I believe it's March 29th for Hex. I do not have an opponent confirmed. I asked for two people. Um, the fight would be at 165, because, again, I don't want to cut – to lightweight unless it's for a bigger uh show um making lightweight is miserable so i asked for a kieran joblin at 165 or a guy named uh maholland or i think that's his name no uh mahoney um he's an up-and-comer um in australia i think he's 11 and 2 and they're both uh veterans so um you know i just want to test myself and I don't want to have to cut to lightweight. So hopefully other lightweights are like, yeah, let's just meet at 165. It, it seems uh, silly, but that extra 10 pounds makes a massive difference. It means I don't have to get in a sauna. And that's the worst part, you know. It, it's silly because, you know, I, I've been in the sauna with my opponents before. And like, hey, how much are you out? And it's like eight pounds. Oh, well, I'm, I'm seven. How come we can't just agree to step on the scale right now you know save save ourselves the punishment but i guess part of the game yeah i'm a big proponent on that 165 pound division i don't see why these smaller organizations just don't put it in there and and start the trend and then you'll have all these 165 pounders ready to fight when they go to the big shows right yeah the other thing that i like um is the one fc thing where they bump the weight class up so like i'm a lightweight but i would have to make 170 i like that you have to be a specific weight all week long because that that matches what i do for my weight cut when it's the week of the fight i'm already 171 172 and i gradually drop a few pounds and then the last 10 pounds is water and glycogen so i mean the one fc way of making weight is ideal for me um, I hope that other organizations jump on board with that. Otherwise, I'm only going to be fighting at 165 for the smallest shows. Unless, you know, um, UFC or Bellator comes a calling, I'm not going to be trying to go to lightweight. Well, everything starts on February 22nd in the main event. They said it's a, it's a, the welterweight title is on the line. Is that true? Yeah, um, I have their welterweight title still, but... Mm -hmm. It's uh, I don't know. It's one of those organiz It's one of those things where they're they're billing it as champion versus champion because he's the desert fighting. Champ I I forget what the name desert of the force, organization is. Desert Force. That's right. He's he's got their shield. They have such a badass belt. It, yeah. It's just that shield. I, I wish that we were trading because I would love to have that thing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, champion versus champion. It'll be fun. Yeah, man. It, yeah, like I said, it starts on February in Kuwait, main event. Thank you for your time, yeah. JJ. And it's always a pleasure talking to you, man. I've been talking to you for a long time, and I always look forward to getting in contact and see what's going on on the island. Definitely. Uh, guys to hit up next would be uh, Jeff Mesa and uh, Ricky Camp. I'm trying to schedule them with the same thing. They're going to be joining me for the Hex show, and then we're in talks for uh, X1 in Hawaii for April for them. All right. Thanks.